We're gonna talk about finishing powder today. When to use finishing powder, how to use finishing powder, setting powder versus finishing powder, and I'll show you what I think are the best finishing powders for mature skin that's over 40. So if you wanna see all things finishing powder, just keep watching. I just did a video on all things setting powder and how I set my face for a longer wear and how to keep your face shine free longer. And it seems to really be helping some of you. So thank you for the feedback on that. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. I will link it up above and down in the description box too. And welcome to my channel if you're new here and welcome back if you are returning. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. I would love to have you back here on a regular basis and hit that thumbs up too. It does help get this video viewed by more people. It helps us out on YouTube so much if you hit that thumbs up. So finishing powder. There seems to be some confusion with finishing powder. So the first thing I'm going to do is compare finishing and setting powder just so you can see the difference in the two. And again, I will say go check out that setting powder video if you haven't seen it just so you know exactly how to apply setting powder and when to do it. But basically the big difference between the two is that after you apply your foundation and concealer, you wanna set those items and lock them in. That's when you apply your setting powder. Finishing powder is used in one of two ways. It's used either immediately after that setting powder step, or it's used after you've completed your full entire makeup look. And it's used to give more of an airbrushed appearance to the skin, to blur pores, that kind of thing. It just gives kind of a Photoshop effect to the skin. It also can help if you have put on too much bronzer or too much highlighter or blush, or if they're just not quite as blended in looking as you want them to be. I've done that in a few of my get ready with me's or my tutorials where I'll see I've applied way too much blush and I'll just go in with the finishing powder and it ends up beautiful. So that should answer setting powder versus finishing powder. There's also been the question of are the two interchangeable? No, they're not. While I guess you could technically use setting powder as a finishing powder, I don't find that they give the same effect. Setting powder is almost always translucent. I find I don't like to set my face with anything colored or shimmery. Personally, being over 40, I just find that tends to emphasize texture and it also can change the color of my makeup if I'm using something tinted. And I don't like to do that. I especially don't like to set my under eye area with something that is tinted or shimmery because it just tends to highlight every texture and fine line that I have going on under my eyes and I don't wanna do that. So finishing powders, can vary. They can be slightly tinted, but very, very fine so that they really don't change the color of your makeup because you've already set your makeup and it's not going to be altered by the finishing powder because most of them are so finely milled. There are some that are completely white and translucent. And again, they're super finely milled. HD powders, are used as finishing powders a lot. I personally don't use those. I like to use ones that have a slight sheen to them or that are just slightly tinted but really fine. I have five finishing powders in front of me that I have really been enjoying using. I think for me personally, they're the best finishing powders I've found for my mature skin that's over 40. And I'm gonna share those with you and then I will demonstrate how I use them using one of them. I'll use the one that I use most often. One of the finishing powders that I have been enjoying and I'll show you, it's a drugstore. It's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Pressed Powder. And this is in the shade Neutral Buff. This powder is very accessible. It's drugstore. On the back, it says goodbye photo flashback. Actually, I find all of these are really good with photo flashback. If you look at it in the pan, you can tell it's been well used and well loved. It's slightly tinted, beigey. It's got a slight sheen to it. So there's the Wet n Wild right there. I'm just gonna kind of move my arm back and forth. Very beigey looking. It's really nice and creamy. It's not too heavy. And when you dust it over the face, it just blurs everything and gives a nice effect. So I do like this one. None of these powders emphasize any fine lines. They just give a nice, like I said, Photoshop effect. This next one works really well for my skin tone. I know there's a lot of different shades of this powder. 
You can see all my foundation shades in the description box below. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Light. And this is again about the same shade as the Wet n Wild Powder if you look at it. So if you look at it next to the Wet n Wild, that lovely sloppy swatch, it is about the same shade, but there's a little bit more of a sheen. I tend to wear this one in the evening because it gives a little bit more of a candle glow effect and more of a soft focus, but it's a beautiful, beautiful powder. And next is Laura Mercier Candle Glow in shade number two. This one looks a little bit deeper compared to the other two and a little bit beigier but it works really well. I do have yellow toned skin as you can see from my foundation shades, but it works really well. And there's the Laura Mercier Candle Glow next to the Hourglass. Again, a little beigier, but when it's dusted over the face, it's very sheer and it looks really nice and luminous on the skin. I'm trying to see the swatches. They're almost just so sheer you can't really even see a difference. So next I'm gonna swatch the one that I use the most of any of these. And I don't know why I use this one the most. I just love it so much. And I carry this with me a lot in my car. For some reason I'll touch up with it during the day sometimes. Um, if I'm going somewhere at night, I'll touch up with it really quickly. It's actually, I think, a light powder foundation, but it's so sheer that I use it as a finishing powder. It's MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium Plus. And here's what it looks like. Very similar to all the others. Very neutral in tone. There's a medium and a medium plus that is my skin tone, and the medium plus is the yellower shade of the two, so that's why I went with that. And there it is next to the Laura Mercier. So it is probably my favorite of all of these, and I do have one more to show you. And the next one I'm gonna show you, I just did a review on, and it is the Glossier Wouter. And I love it. It's the only loose finishing powder that I own and love. I've really been liking it. So I'm gonna link you to the video that I just did because pretty much everything about it is in that video but I will swatch it next to the others. This is the one that I have that is matte. It has no sheen to it, no candle glow effect, but it's nice and sheer and light and it still gives an airbrushed finish to the pores, which you can see in that video. So this one is gonna swatch a little bit differently and more sheer because it is loose and it does give, like I said, a more airbrush finish and it's so sheer. And these are not as sheer, but give more of a candle glow, airbrushed sheen effect. So it's really hard to see this one on swatch. Now I'm gonna go into showing you how I use finishing powder on my finished face. I personally like to use a fluffy domed type brush like these. This is the Bare Minerals Handy Bookie, which I think they still make, and this is the Morphe M39. The Morphe is a little bit more dense than the Handy Bookie by Bare Minerals. Either one works just fine. I don't like them to be too, too dense, but not too loose either. I really just prefer a domed, almost foundation brush looking thing. Like a smaller kabuki type brush. I don't really like a flat top. I don't know why, I just don't like it. It's personal preference, you may love something else. Something else that I used when I was traveling is this kind of new e.l.f. blending brush. This actually worked pretty well. It's a weird shape, but it worked fine. I need to wash it. And the new little Sephora VIP Rouge brush that I got for renewing my Sephora Rouge membership. Um, this actually worked when I was traveling and it's tiny, but you know, it didn't take up a lot of space, but it worked. So really anything kind of rounded and fluffy, not too densely packed, not too loosely packed. That's just what I like and I like it to be super, super soft. So I'm going to zoom in and show you what I do. I have got rogue hairs everywhere. You're just going to have to excuse those. I don't know why I have so many flyaways lately. It's just life. So I am using the Mineralized Skin Finish for this today. And I'm hoping you can kind of see my pores and, you know, my contour and things like that, you know. And I'm gonna kinda just 
blur it all together. I, I don't think I have anything weird going on with my makeup today. So I'm hoping you can kind of tell. But I just take the brush and tap it in. Swirl it in a little bit. Tap off any excess. You don't really have to because it's all going to be blended into the skin. And I just lightly, but not too lightly, brush it over my skin. And it just gives a soft effect, yet it doesn't take away anything from the makeup. So that's really it. It just blends it in and makes it look a little more natural. It's not going to be for everybody. If you want a really sharp contour or bronzer look to your makeup, you may not want this. But on an everyday basis when I'm going to work or what have you, I want my makeup to look natural and blend it in. And this really does help with that and doesn't take away anything from the overall makeup look. I'm going to zoom out. That's it. There's nothing to it. It just gives a more natural blended in look to your makeup. You don't necessarily need it, but it's something that's nice to do sometimes. And I don't do it every day, but I use it quite often. And if you don't like a blended in look, if you like a sharper contour or bronze look to your makeup, you can do it right after you set your makeup with setting powder and it will still give an airbrush finish to your makeup. You could do it with your HD powder, with the more airbrush looking Photoshop powder. You can do it with the sheen type powder. I personally like using the more sheen glowy type powders because they do give a candlelight look to the face. It's kind of nice at night to do that. So that's it. That's the difference between finishing powder and setting powder. When you might want to use finishing powder, you might not want to use finishing powder or find a need for it. But there are occasions when you might want to use it and you might want to have one on hand just in case. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you're not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would love to have you back here on a regular basis. And if you're not following me on social media, I'm pretty active on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll put those on the screen and down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.